I used to go to bed thinking something I did affected a million people today. Reddit has its 10th cake day with my fellow co-founder Steve Huffman this week on Upvoted by Reddit. Welcome to Upvoted by Reddit. I am your host, Alexis Ohanian. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode with the infamous War Lizard. It was great to have Michelle Visage, RuPaul, Ice-T, and Double Dick Dude join us for that episode. Now this week, we're going to be doing a very, very special episode with my Reddit co-founder, Steve Huffman. June 23rd was the 10th anniversary of Reddit. That is right, a decade ago, the two of us got in a little apartment in Medford, Massachusetts and flipped the switch to bring reddit.com to the world, June 23rd, 2005. And I knew I wanted to have an episode with my co-founder, Steve. Now, he's since gone on and is the CTO of Hitmonk, a company which I helped him launch, uh, but that he co-founded with Adam Goldstein back in 2010. It's a great travel search website, shameless plug. But the two of us hadn't gotten together to really talk about Reddit stuff in a minute. So this was cool. We got to do a little bit of nostalgia. We got to rehash some of the ups, some of the downs. A bunch of the things about this company that we didn't really expect back when we were getting started. It really was just an excuse to not have a real job. And it was great to reconnect with him. Um, Steve was one of my closest friends throughout college, throughout that whole startup process. Uh, And I really feel like actually in the last few months, we've really kind of reconnected in a way that, um, you know, we just hadn't in years before. And so this podcast was a big part of that. So, you know, there's that. Um, But anyway, I brought him over to my apartment and uh, we got talking about the early days of Reddit. And instead of doing a traditional interview or traditional upvoted episode, I I really just invited him over. We broke out some scotch and just started reminiscing about all things Reddit. We talked about everything from early versions of the site, which are going to be fun because we have screenshots, which you can refer to in the show notes in case you're wondering what exactly we're talking about. Uh, the addition of comments, which which were a really big deal, but were not part of the original Reddit. Uh, how Google offered to acquire us. Uh, we talked about working with Aaron Swartz. Uh, talked about how freedom of speech and how and really what role that played in creating Reddit uh, and how the front page could possibly be made better in the future. Please keep in mind for the beginning of this episode, we're going to refer to various screenshots of those early versions of Reddit, and those will all be in the show notes. Again, that's why you should subscribe to r slash upvoted. Um, but there will also be a version on YouTube where you can obviously see those screenshots while you're listening and a version on the podcast app, Acast, where you can see those screenshots while we're talking about them. All right, that's it. We'll get started right after a quick word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Ting. Ting is an awesome mobile company with no contracts where you only pay for the calls, texts, and data that you actually use. No overages. And they have pretty remarkable customer service. A Redditor named SamAlex01 wrote this in r slash Ting. Hi all, I've used Ting for my phone for over 2.5 years and I love it. I'm not a heavy data user though. We're moving temporarily to a place for about 2-3 to three months while we're waiting for our new home to be built. And during this time, we'll have no broadband. I looked at using Ting for broadband, but it seems if we used, say, 10 gigs during a given month, this would be very expensive. 2 gigs is $30 a month, and it looks like about $15 per gig after this. Is this correct? I'd love to keep all my stuff through Ting and just tether as needed, but if I'm calculating data correctly, I don't think this will be a good option. I don't plan on leaving Ting just for this. I'll instead just get a second plan for data from someone else. Just hope there was an option through Ting. Am I missing anything? Thanks. A Ting employee with the Reddit username ReJustin actually responded to the OP that this would be a fair bit of use over a short period of time and recommended some prepaid mobile hotspot options. Ting is the only mobile company who really cares so much about their customers that they'll help them save money by using other services. That's why an additional Reddit user named another former digger responded saying this, quote, now that's great customer service, end quote. So if you're not already with Ting, sign up now. For $25 in Ting credit or $25 off of a new device, go to upvoted.ting.com. That's upvoted.ting.com. This episode is also brought to you by Harry's. Harry's is serious about their shaving products while still respecting your face and your wallet. Though you don't have to take my word for it. 
A Redditor by the name of Zero Saber, that's with a zero for the O, wrote this in r slash shaving. I recently received mine in the mail, and I'm extremely happy with it. The handle is a really, really solid build and very comfortable. I tend to hold my razor almost like a pencil for the areas under my chin and jaw, and most name brand razors are less comfortable that way. The Truman fits perfectly, and just holding it normally also. The blades themselves are very sharp, and I find myself not needing to push or blow out any stray hair during rinses. Just splash in water, run under the tap, and away you go. The lather gel they provide is also nice. Good smell. Works into a fine lather, and doesn't linger too long. So, go to harrys.com now, and they'll give you $5 off if you type in the coupon code UPVOTED with your first purchase. Start shaving better today. That's harrys.com, coupon code UPVOTED. So I'm Steve Huffman. I'm co-founder of Reddit, Alexis's other half. You can be the better half. No, that's not true. We're both. We're both halves. We're both. Yeah, we're, we're both the bottom half. <laughs> so I was at Reddit until 2009, and I left. Took some time off, and then in 2010 started Hitmonk, which is a travel search startup, which is doing pretty well now. Celebrated our. We celebrated our five-year anniversary. Uh, like a month ago, a couple weeks ago. So, and and are bringing uh, taking the agony out of travel search. Is that right? Yes. Don't let travel drive you nuts. Oh, that's good. That's good. that's a good one. That's a new one. Yeah, we got a, we've got a good marketing team. Well done. Well done, Hitmog marketing team. All right. So, um, you're you're the uh, the the brains behind Reddit, and and also the the less. Uh, let's say, uh, uh, public facing. That's right. That's right. So this is a rare chance for people to get inside of your head. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So what, 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 what do we want to expose them to? Can I, can, can you, can you say that I can ask you anything? You can ask me, ask me almost <laughs> anything. <laughs> you know, what, actually, you know what I think is dumb. I think ask me almost anything is a, is a cop out. Why do you say that? I think you should ask me anything. You're under no obligation to answer. I just feel like I will answer almost anything. All right. I mean, I will answer anything. But whenever I see AMAA, do people still do that? Yeah, time to time. I, I don't like that. That's 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 cowardly. The president did, didn't do that, did he? There you go. No, the president did not. So you're cool. You, you almost called President Obama a coward, but we're cool. Uh, no, he did not. Yeah, so yeah, ask me anything. I'll answer almost anything. Well, so let's go back in time. 2005, uh, we just graduated from the University of Virginia. Wahoo wah. And, and we were, um, we had just been rejected. Okay. We hadn't yet graduated, but we had gotten rejected for this other idea that you had had to brutal. skip yep. lines. Yep. Um, and then we were tasked with, with, with coming up with something else that would work in a browser, not on a phone. And, and, and how did Reddit come out of that? Yeah. So we, let's see, as I recall, I actually, I still have my page of notes from that meeting. In your little notebook? Yeah. I remember that notebook. Um, yeah, still got it. The green one. Dude. Um, I wish you did that for this that? movie. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, Can we get there's, some scans from it or something? Yeah, totally. Um, right. And so so I, I, I remember the story legitimately, but I was reading through the notebook uh, about a year ago, and I remember what I wrote down. I wrote down the front page of the internet, um, which is cool. Uh, that's lasted. That was, you know, obviously tongue-in-cheek in the beginning, and that was passable. Um, I also wrote down... Slash dot and delicious, which were, you know, that's what we wanted to build, right? Delicious mm -hmm. with good content or slash dot slash dot with good mechanics. And, you know, we were trying to make the love child of those two websites, which fortunately didn't turn out. You know, I guess it could have been the bad mechanics with bad content, um, <laughs> but, but we got the good mechanics with good content version, which I'm very proud of. And, and actually, have you got, you got a chance to sync up with Rob? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we had dinner. It was probably going on a couple of years ago now. Mm -hmm. Um, it was really cool to meet him. So Rob Maldo was one of the founders of Slashdot, one of the original editors. Um, he's Commander Taco, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Commander Taco. Um, yeah, it was really fun kind of shooting the shit with him. He described, he, he saw a talk with you and said, ah, there's the 18 charisma guy. <laughs> Where's the other guy? <laughs> Where's the guy who actually did all the real work? Um, he, 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 was, he, was, uh, he was definitely my counterpart at Slashdot. So it was an honor to meet him because I was a big Slashdot user before Reddit. Yeah, and there are lots of people who 
including Mike Larrington, who still to this day insists that we were a dig clone. No. And it's so not true. It's not true. We were a slash dot clone. Exactly. Well, we were, we, well, we, were, we were a delicious clone. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> and, uh, but, it was, but, but slash dot was in our hearts because I, I was a big slash dot user. I truly, at the time, I used to describe slash dot as the best repository for internet humor. And I think Reddit has, well, taken over in, 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 in many ways. But that was the thing that I really looked up to was the cleverness of their users. Can we... I want to pull up some old screenshots of Reddit because um, I kept a bunch of these. There was that first draft yeah, that yeah. You, you, you just made. It was a bunch of HTML that you just didn't do anything. Yeah, I was, um, the, 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 the challenge we had to overcome was that I didn't know what I was doing. This was your first, aside from your senior thesis, this was your first uh, web app, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. And what language did you write it in? A Lisp. Um, <laughs> just take a minute to process that yeah, everyone. Yeah. Um, no, it, uh, let's see. Okay. So this, <laughs> this is the thing we made after YC accepted us just to show them like, yeah, trust us. We're working on something yeah. between, between, uh, we're still finishing up our time at UVA and then before this starting was YC. typical, what I would call, um, a Steve college effort here. <laughs> <laughs> it look, actually looks a lot like slash. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm we'll I'm, have this in the show notes. I, I'm not the designer. Hey, now, I mean, the mascot looks great. I mean, it's a little janky. He's a little, his mouth is mouth a little soft, chin. is the wrong way. All right. It was still a work in progress, but this was Snoo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but here's, here's what's cool. Okay. So there was right here, we had this notion of pops. Do you remember anything about this? Um, I don't remember the word pops. I'd forgotten about the word pops. I haven't thought that in 10 years, but <laughs> I, the notion of um, like stories having a score and that score translating into karma is also in my first page of notes. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, no, not the first page. The first page was that the brainstorming meeting. The it was notes from the plane ride up um, to Boston. I think we traveled separately because I, I, I recall being on the plane by myself. Yes, you got and, there a couple days before I did. Um, and so that was one of the very, very. I mean, look. I mean, I guess there's no other ideas on this page. It was copy slash dot and add pops, evidently. Well, and and the karma score next to the username. Oh, uh, yeah. And I'll note okay. that you gave yourself more karma points uh, uh, yeah. than me, jerk. Yeah. But you, then, then there's PG. Yeah, PG's <laughs> killing it. PG's killing it. And you have a, a humble 69 karma points. Yeah. But that's – but so so there was some kind of pops thing, even though there wasn't any voting mechanism at this point. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, remember, it, it – the first Reddit, the first couple of real Reddits had no voting mechanism. At, well, they, they had a uh, – a judgment mechanism. Well, so, but, but I want to, I want to dig on this though. So how, how, what was the thought process yes. behind pops, but not, or, or it, it, it was, or we thought, um, that you would get more pops if users resubmitted the same articles. Mm -hmm. Um, that's how delicious worked. Delicious mm -hmm. popular worked by, oh my goodness. Uh, new, new, a new, a new screenshot has appeared. I just, <laughs> I just pulled up this one. This one's like an RSS reader. I was, this was, I was playing around with Ajax. Ajax was this fancy new technology. Um, but this was a big deal. It was, it was, um, uh, what was the big deal at the time? Google had just added, Google just added autocomplete to their search. I remember that year and I was inspired. I was like, we can do the whole website in Ajax. Mm -hmm. But this was, this was a big deal, right? Cause you could click a vote button and things could change without having to reload the page. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did the whole thing without JavaScript, the first version. Why did we do that? The first version of Reddit worked. Everything worked degraded um, all the way down to you don't have JavaScript. And the, the arrows are turned into links and reload the page. Because it worked. It had to work in IE 5. And links yeah. in other browsers. Yeah, the, the, but they weren't, they weren't arrows yet. Yeah, but no, we thought, because I, anyway, back to your Pops question, it was um, Delicious had that, had that notion of, of, like the Delicious Popular, what the, the stories were more popular if they'd been submitted more times. And so I just thought that would be the mechanic Reddit would use. Um, but then we, it looks like in this very first version, what do we say? So this is, this is the first version that went online. This screenshot happened a few hours after we first finally launched the site. But this, this, this is live. This is live yeah, on the internet. This is live reddit.com. I have no idea how, I remember, I remember these bars because one was for score and the other one was for like hotness. Yeah. There was uh, some site that was doing some version of this. I, was there... Or, yeah, 
I don't remember the inspiration for that. I remember it was an idea. I remember the idea we're tossing it around as this line would um, grow shorter and shorter over time. I mean, that's exactly what it was. You're right. The, the yellow bar was how hot it was. And so that would shrink with time and the red bar would stay fixed. That would always grow to the right as the story um, got more votes. And, and that's actually still kind of an interesting dynamic. Um, you know, I, I think that would work fine on Reddit now. So it's time for a redesign. Yeah, let's do that. Let's bring that. <laughs> we had it right the first time. Well, it's, it's funny because, uh, right, delicious slash popular is what we were looking at. And it was a, that was a byproduct of people bookmarking stuff, which was this list of popular links. Like it wasn't explicit. You didn't go to delicious because you wanted to share and vote and all that stuff. It was a side effect. Yeah. It, it, was, it was a glimpse into, you know, social news. Do you think delicious could have become Reddit? Um, mm, no, no. I think Joshua, Joshua Schachter was the founder of delicious. He had very different goals in mind. Um, but you know, there was definitely, I mean, give him credit. He invented tagging, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember a certain co-founder of yours who really wanted tags on Reddit? Yeah. Well, I mean, we all wanted tags at one point, maybe never you. No, I was the one who wanted it really oh, badly. Oh, you wanted no, tags? You talked me out of it. This, this was oh. fundamental because this was, this was the subreddits versus tag fight. Yeah, but I remember at one point I wanted tags too. And I, Zach Stone, who was also he was in our YC class, so kind of a mental confidant of ours, he, I cannot remember anymore if he hated tags or loved tags. We spent a lot of time on that debate. Yeah. I'm glad how it worked out. No, it worked out really, really well yeah. because we... This was, I, I remember this because this was a really big like product fight we had. And my thinking was if we had tags, like you submit a link, you could quickly tag it three things yep. and quickly populate three different categories. Yep. And you told me that was dumb for a very good reason. Well, because you couldn't have three different discussions. Oh, wow. Good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, yeah, you, were, you were so far ahead of the. I, I remember the having the, the other thing I thought was important about tags is there was no. Um, consistency to them and that like because reddit had a lot of politics at the time yes. and so what i would tag as like interesting some guy of a different political persuasion would tag as like trash mm -hmm. and then so you would diverge the community right then mm -hmm. um and there'd be and so and so then it got on all these complicated things of, okay okay so you could tag other people's stuff and you could kind of hijack it with these other tags and it just it started to feel very unreddit Mm -hmm. Because we didn't do anything that was difficult to explain, at least not intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> and I will I will point out one thing just because I bring it up every single time I show this screenshot of the first version of Reddit, which is that I made the first submission, which was a link to the Downing Street memo, and you downvoted it. Yeah, well, no wow. politics on the front page. Why? <laughs> <laughs> karma, negative one. Negative one karma. Thanks. Thanks yeah, Dave. we fixed that. That was a feature we fixed uh, very early on, which is... Users, um, they could have negative karma, but we would never display negative karma. Until, Why was important? Well, we didn't want users to feel discouraged, right? Mm -hmm. You submit a story, it immediately gets downvoted. You know, your karma can just stay at one. Um, but if your karma hit negative 100, at that point, we felt like you were so bad it was funny. And so then I would show the karma again. <laughs> I totally don't remember that. That's amazing. Yeah. It was like, um, I did that because um, the user, I think it was 9-11 was an inside job. Oh, uh, yes. Um, although his karma hit like minus a thousand or something like that and then skyrocketed back up when like, it. I, I still don't know if he was joking, but it turned into a joke. He was probably one of the original, um, what, do you, what do you call those, novelty accounts. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He really was. Yeah. Wake well, up, she sheeple. really was. Yeah, remember that? Oh, man. Wow. My, how times have changed. I wonder, um, I wonder, what, I wonder what he's doing. I wonder doing. what he's doing. We can look that up. Wake up, um, sheeple. All right. So here, this is, so I have a screenshot here of the the earliest, I'm, I'm really happy I took these screenshots, um, yeah. of these earliest, I think this is the earliest version of our voting system because you can see there is an option to click interesting or boring. Yeah, let's okay, let's see if we can go down these headlines and find the one where that's the most inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz I remember there was one it's like shark attack. Oh no, 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 that was cool uncool. Oh, no, no, because before uh, interesting and boring it's a cool uncool. I remember whenever there was like bad awkward. news you'd be like shark attack cool. Um, and and so we're like okay, no what we really want to capture is interesting boring, but even that was too uh, um too editorial. 
Yeah, and what's wild is this really was a, a like a process. I remember I really I I remember doing a mock up of the site with five stars, which you promptly talked me out of. Here's here's a version of it, sort yeah. of, um, which was also not a very good idea because who really? What's the difference between a three star and a four star or you a know, two star? I've had that is one of like the. I've got a lot of product opinions, but that is one I feel probably the most passionate about. Because yeah. it comes up at Hitmonk too. It comes up everywhere yeah. whenever you're rating. And I am just such a firm believer in yes or no rating. Mm-hmm. Um, you can turn it into five stars if you want. You know, you can say like four out of five people vote yes. You know, you can normalize it to uh, whatever scale you want. But yes or no, it's so much easier. Yeah, that, w- that was definitely the right decision. Now, coming up with a way to symbolize the mm-hmm. interesting boring right so it wasn't yeah. I remember we messed with like a star and no star for a minute and yep. then eventually got to arrows yep and the arrows oh there's wow. interesting look boring. at these these are great so we have an idea of sorting so there's hottest newest and most popular of all time we also have a top posters here yeah. on the top right uh kind of leaderboard what do you, th- do you think we need to bring back leaderboards um, on a subreddit level at least we subreddit level is a good idea perhaps um the leaderboards i thought were important right this was mm-hmm. this was gamification before yeah, before it was cool. before that was a vocabulary word mm. but we definitely used to say uh like video games well it's because that's all we knew yeah we were yeah. gamers it's not nearly as catchy but um <laughs> top top uh top posters was good and we eventually changed that to top posters of the day right mm-hmm. so that it felt more egalitarian you could win at any time, right? You weren't just running away with it. Um, there was actually a shocking amount, right? So it was gamification before gamification. The the interesting, boring upvote, downvote was well before the like button or anything like that. Oh, yeah. It's sort of now a yeah. standard. Yeah, we can take credit for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, all right. So this is a little bit later. Now we have – now this basically, <laughs> this basically looks like Reddit today. It is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is still that summer though. Yeah, no, it because is. Those are the arrows with the shaft. This is the janky. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I take full responsibility for these terrible arrows. We had an advisor. I think it was Paul. It, it was, was definitely oh, Paul yeah, yeah, yeah. who was giving us advice on the head to shaft ratio of my arrows. What did he say? More head, less shaft <laughs> yeah. was the exact quote, actually. Yeah, good. Paul, Paul was always good for advice. Yeah, but, and the, so, yeah, but there was yeah, no yeah, downvote here. So this is, <laughs> no, it says promotions. Oh, my, yeah. So this is we're still working through boosts and all yeah. Those so other this things. is very early and it's it's actually shocking. This, yeah. in fact, you can enable. I think if you go to that like the old CSS mode, yeah, it basically looks just like this. In fact, that's still how I browse Reddit today on my browser. Just like this. I don't I don't like the thumbnails. Um, they're too chaotic for me. Those thumbnails, man. I know. I mean, I agree. Thumbnails are important. I think that's well. We're not here to talk about the future. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Only the past. Uh, but, <laughs> but like at this point, I this is probably a month or so in. At this point also, so everyone knows because of your Udacity course, which you should all take, um, that we faked users mm-hmm. yeah. for weeks. Probably a month, yeah. month and a half pretty uh, actively. We faked users definitely until August. Yeah. Because I, I often tell that story about there was that day in August. I wish I could remember the exact date mm-hmm. um, where you and I didn't submit anything that day. That mm-hmm. was the first day you and I didn't submit anything and the site actually continued to work. Yeah. Um, but we had fake. I mean, we, I still have a couple of fake accounts I log into. Are they active? Oh, yeah. For- <laughs> the problem <laughs> is there's, there's a tell now because it used to be um, it used to be back in the day. If I really wanted to shit on somebody, I could just log into one of my other accounts and do so. Um, but the problem is now they're like, oh, who's this 10-year account? Because <laughs> like, there's not too many of them, so they're probably me. Uh, <laughs> so I need to – I wish I had made more accounts over the years that had you know, more, more legitimate start times, not you know, June 2005. Well, I will say this. The, this screenshot we're looking at here, I can see one or two – of our accounts, I won't name them, <laughs> but most I mean, of these are actually other people we don't know at this point. So I don't. This is probably in August then, right? Because this was me. I'm pretty sure this one was me. Uh, yeah, and one of those top posters is also definitely you. Oh, oh yeah, that one. Uh, no, 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 on, on the right there, the third one. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah, because remember our naming algorithm for <laughs> usernames was either. 
characters out of Warcraft or pieces of furniture in our immediate eyesight. <laughs> we were not trying very hard. Yeah, I wonder how Couch is doing. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is particularly interesting because everyone I get asked this, you must get asked this a lot about like the the like how were we able to reconcile faking accounts early on in Reddit. And and for us, it seemed like the only way we could possibly get users to understand the site or at least come to it and like... Yeah, I, mean, I felt no guilt about that. People have implied before that like that's some, somehow dishonest. Yeah. It never, that thought never even crossed my mind. Um, what we felt like, nobody wants to hang out in a ghost town. So give the people what they want, which is a page full of links. And if the users aren't going to do it, we'll do it. Um, and we had built that infrastructure around that. Um, you know, you know, when we had our submit page had a, a URL, a title, and a, a username field. And then when you hit submit, it would automatically register that username. And if that username already existed, it would add a two to it, as if we would accidentally guess a <laughs> username from one of our, you know, 10 users. I didn't even know about that feature. Yeah. This is very well thought out. Yeah, it was, I was thorough for a time. <laughs> but that's, that is what it took. Because also in 2005, this was a really new concept. Like it, people could have stumbled on the site and been like, what is this weird Spartan looking blog? Like there, yeah. were, there was no, no idea of social media. Yeah. And the other, I, I remember the other kind of big product philosophy at the time was for us was um, users shouldn't have to care how it works. It's just there should be so many links and they should be so prominent that if they accidentally come to Reddit for some reason, they'll accidentally read something interesting and then be hooked. Mm -hmm. And before they know what their brain is doing, they will have clicked on it. Um, you know, and I feel like that's one of the tenets of like, you know, any social media site now and any site on the internet that has that stupid, like clickbait crap at the bottom. You know, that was, uh, we were, we were like clickbait with actually good content. <laughs> Reddit clickbait with actually good content. And, and to be clear, we didn't have comments back then, so it's not like we were telling each other, like, great comment, Steve. Yeah, exactly. I can't – it's it's pretty hilarious. People don't believe me when I tell them we didn't have comments because oh. what's Reddit without the comments? Well, and there was – I remember there was a discussion about this. Oh, uh, violent. Yeah. You and I agreed. I remember. Yeah. We were very much in favor of comments. Yeah. Paul hated comments. Did not want comments. Um, Joel Spolsky. Like, the two guys oh, we yeah. kind of looked up to, they both hated yeah. comments. I remember Joel's – I think one of the first comments on Reddit was from Joel, and it said something like, well – this is the end of Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> that thread, the thread announcing comments on Reddit is priceless because there are a few of those comments which are like, yep, oh, they're fucked. <laughs> they never recovered from this one. Uh, and obviously comments are now, you know, the lifeblood of the site. Um, one other thing I'll point out, this one had, with this, this highlighted the red box. thing, that was for the last click. Yeah, link. so what happened is you would click a link and then we draw the red box on it. Mm -hmm. So that... Um, cause remember browsers, um, barely had tabs then and, right. yeah. and, and so you, you, you click on something and then, um, oh, 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 oh. And we didn't open in a new tab. We didn't open a new window. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't know what Reddit does right now because I instinctively open everything in a new tab now. But, um, I thought opening things in a new window or tab or whatever is hostile to you towards users. Um, I don't know why, but that's what I felt. And so you'd have to click the back button. And so I, I wanted it so when you click the back button, you know where you left off. And so that's what that little red box is for. That is that is no more, though. We got tabs. Yeah. Tabs are winning the day. But yeah. we don't actually default open to new windows. Uh, yeah. Or open um, tabs, rather. Uh, I'd have to think about that one a little bit. But, man, I, I but that, that mechanic could be a lot better. Um, you know, because I still use the Reddit toolbar which nobody really uses. And when I go on a computer without the toolbar, it's, it's still really tedious because you open a link and then getting to the comments for that link is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, that's, there's, there's, some, there's a product idea for you. That's the only one. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this slightly later version, there are upvotes and there are downvotes. There's also, remember these awkward, hide, the RTM button? Yeah. The hide button? I've already seen this link. Oh, man. Hi. There's still a hide button. I know. I know. Why? Did we, um, we did that just for RTM. Delete that feature. Delete that database. Yeah. Uh, that's just a one of our investors. Yeah. Or partners. Uh, yeah. It was the RTM button. Um, RTM, uh, famous for the Morris worm. Um, 
early supporter of Reddit, hated seeing the same links over and over again. So he would delete them all. I mean, it was kind of nice. You know, it, it forced actually, it um, forced some architectural decisions on us. Because uh, at the time, you know, I struggled a little bit with, okay, we've got to load, you know, all these links from the database, sort them by their popularity, and then prune out based on every user what they've hidden, what they've uploaded, what they've downloaded. And so, um, you know, the initial version of that was really database heavy. And so having to deal with all those issues early on was a good thing. We, we, I think we ended up kind of working our way to an architecture that scaled you know, much better for that. No, I'm laughing. I'm, <laughs> laughing. I'm laughing because you're generously using the we, but these were clearly not issues that I was working on. Oh, I'm sorry. I saw, sorry. Sorry for ten years. No, no. I have massive ego. <laughs> I've only been speaking in the royal we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was not helping with any database issues. Um, although, nice little shout out back here. Here we go. Reddit is written in common, common Lisp, uh, a Paul Graham blog post. Do you remember this was this is this site Reddit? We were. Uh, sort of leaders, like champions of the Lisp. Community. Yeah, uh, we probably deployed more Lisp code in production than just about anybody. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, we're pretty proud of that. I mean, I loved Lisp. That's what I mean. Lisp is what Lisp is what attracted me to Paul. Paul's what got us into you know YC and starting Reddit, and 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 Lisp also got us our first users because um, Paul promoted us on his blog, and he had still mostly Lisp fans. And a lot of these guys are Lisp programmers. That's how we have that such good content. Well, and let's be clear here. You were the kid in uh, in your CS department who always submitted his assignments in Lisp. If I could, man, it's an unfair advantage. <laughs> I mean, if you don't believe me, read Paul's essays. <laughs> the old ones. <laughs> There's uh... – <laughs> do, you, do you ever – I mean, I can – we can talk about the switch to Python, but do you ever like – do you ever encounter any Lispers anymore who are? Uh, you know, I the well, I, I still chat with Matt Knox from time to time. Right Remember on. him? Yeah, of course. Matt Knox. He's at Twitter now, right? Uh, I think he, he has left. Okay, never mind. Uh, Matt, he, send us an email. He just had a baby. Oh, that's why I remember. I know he had some big things going on. So I can't remember right. if he's at Twitter. But, Good for him. Um, he has actually deployed more Lisp code than anybody else in the world mm. because he wrote, I think it was the Gator spyware. Wow. In Lisp, um, and that was deployed on like, hundreds of millions of machines. So that was—he's—he's he's a cool guy. Um, although he wrote spyware, for he used it for the dark side. Yeah, that's why it was such good spyware. All those parens from um, evil. Yeah, I still write Lisp about once a year. Really? Yeah, it's fun. Oh, right on. I still. It's... Do you remember trying to teach me Lisp over that summer? Um, I. I... <laughs> For 12 hours. I remember you scanned <laughs> your. Pay- it was you trying to learn Lisp and Emacs in the same day. That was tough. That was ambitious. That was ambitious. I, I admire your, uh, it's like, it's like reading that cause you took a page of notes from mm-hmm. that day. And I yeah. remember it's like, it's reading that page of notes is like kind of like hiking up Everest and seeing a frozen body. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, he had a big heart. <laughs> <laughs> May we all learn from his mistakes yeah. and hubris. <laughs> oh yeah. Now it wasn't meant to be, but fortunately you were able to carry the load. Um, so, okay, we know this is, so here's June of 2005. This is a profile page. Um, oh, man, what the weird. No, so this must be. Was this just a mock up? I think this must have been a mock. Okay, never Because mind. look at the date. June, what's that? What is that? June 6th. Oh, right. June that was before 6th. We, yeah, never mind. We probably launched June 10th and you would have had. No, like, no, no. We launched, I know we launched June 23rd. Oh, 23rd. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you, and you had negative one karma, so. Yeah, never mind. You were, you were, you were seeing it in the future. That's a mock up. That's a lie. Okay, this, uh, this is just a random page. We should, I feel like we should talk a little bit about how the, the process would go. Um, Let's talk about the process. Well, you know, well, you know, back in the day, you know, because we had desks that faced each other mm-hmm. and we'd come up with a feature idea, mm-hmm. you know, whoever it was. And then I'd write the, uh, the first version mm-hmm. and then I would hand it, basically I'd hand it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you would make these mocks, like you'd pretty it up. Barely. Yeah. Let's I, keep in mind, let's keep in mind. You know, I, you know, design, uh, sense. yeah, I mean, you, you, you always belittle it, but I remember like, I was very impressed. I guess it's just, it's really more of my taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was poor. I um, regret Verdana every single day. I oh my Reddit. gosh. I remember there was a time when I was like, I just don't care. Now when I see Ariel or Verdana, it's just like, Oh, good. Um, but uh, yeah, you'd pretty it up. So I remember you'd always send me these mocks and then I would try to, using the web technology of the time, replicate it. And I still, oh my gosh, this page, like 
Is there a, is, is the search box still one pixel taller than the blue bar going into it? Um, I think it is. No, I think it's actually. Oh, that's close. a good one then. Yeah, Man, that boy, version. that was off for a while. That used to drive me bananas. Was it a CSS thing? Um, I don't know. I mean, yes, yes. I mean, it was a CSS thing, but it was like, was it my fault or the browser's fault? I'm not, that I'm not sure of. Um, we were we were both limited back then. Do you do you remember what this recommend button was? Was this the equivalent of share? Recommend. Oof. Um, no, I don't remember what that was. But that was a. Uh, I don't see because that that recommend for me that's such a loaded word at Reddit because of the recommendations, mm -hmm. and that was something we were working on around this time. Um. So I don't know if that was share. I doubt it was share because we had no notion of viral or social or share anything. Just the email. That's not. Yeah. And it was it's still what? Unchanged. <laughs> just, we are actually just now pushing that change finally. Oh, so we have it. We've got a tweet and a Facebook share. You should try it out. Thank try God. it out. New share. I know. Don't have to log into share anymore. Only 10 years. I know. I know. <laughs> Trust me. Reddit. The only uh, site with incredibly viral content that makes you log into share. <laughs> <laughs> make you earn it. And then only give you an option to just email it within our, uh, oh boy. our lovely yeah. site. Wow. Well, hey. Yeah. Um, We're getting there. <clears throat> but wait, okay. So, so, so recommendation. I don't remember. I I, I don't remember either. Save. Okay. We still have that. Mm -hmm. I still save stuff. Was that? Okay. Not a lot of our users save. But when the, the ones who do save a ton. Yeah. Was that not like, hey, delicious is this cool thing. Let you save. Like At this point, at, 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 at this point, our product ideas were 100% our own. Right. Um, and so save, uh, as, as somebody who saves not a ton, but from time to time, it was basically... I'll read this later. This is an interesting headline. Um, I don't think I've ever once gone back to my save links and read them. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if, imagine, especially on mobile, if this were a way to kind of basically do what like Instapaper and the rest do, mm -hmm. where you can be like, click, I'll check this out later on. Uh, I'm, uh... Yeah, I think the key there is actually, so saving is great. The key is making it, um, is putting it back in front of your face, you know, because I do this with save links on Reddit and I do this with bookmarks just in general, right? I bookmark something to read later. Um, and then I forget about it. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you came back to Reddit and your saved links were there, that's almost like to-do items, mm -hmm. that'd, be, that'd be pretty dope. Let's take a second to thank our sponsor. We all know that great feeling you get when you can just get something done with the click of a mouse. Nothing beats that, except getting things done at the click of your mouse with rice. Now you can even get your mailing and shipping done without leaving your desk, thanks to Stamps.com. Stamps.com turns your PC or Mac into your own personal post office that never closes. You can buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter or package just using your computer and printer. Just hand the mail off to the mailman or drop it in a mailbox and you'll never have to go to the post office again. Right now, use my promo code UPVOTED for this special offer. You'll get a no-risk trial and a $110 bonus offer, which includes up to $55 in free postage and a digital scale. So go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone on the top, and type in UPVOTED. You'll be saving on postage and helping support this show. That's stamps.com, offer code U-P-V-O-T-E-D. Let me ask you this. We still only have, there's only one Reddit community, right? There's no notion of subreddits or anything like right, that. Right, right. Um, you know, even today, the default, right? There's a, there's a logged out front page, which has a bunch yeah. of default communities. And then there's your logged in, one, which has all the ones you subscribe to. Yeah. Is there another way to look at the Reddit front page? that incorporates some more of this stuff that gets this stuff in front of you. Like, like, so something like your, like your point about save, right? If I say something later, is it not interesting or is it not relevant enough to put it back in front of me at a later point? Oh, that's what I'm suggesting. I yeah. should absolutely do that. So it, like a different kind of front page feed. I mean, I would just put that on the front page somewhere, stick it at the top. I mean, there's lots of things you could do. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things actually, this is what I miss about this time of Reddit. Um, is I guess you kind of get this on our all, um, but the the FOMO I have right now, mm -hmm. you know, because I subscribe to my Reddits, mm -hmm. but I subscribed to most of my Reddits five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the only Reddits I've subscribed in the last five years are uh, Circle Jerk, Shower Thoughts, Redskins, R slash Redskins. Uh, the Redskins, whenever that crit was created, yeah. The Warriors. Oh, wow. Um, Golden State over here. But like very few. Like sports related, Red Wings. Mm -hmm. um, 
So there's all sorts of communities I, that lovely and amazing things on Reddit that I just don't even see. How do we get those in front of you? Because yeah. there's so much amazing shit. That's the biggest problem. Well, yeah, that is, that is, man, that's been on my mind for, a, yeah. for eight years now. Because um, right, when we were at this stage, you had already convinced me that one day people would build their own Reddit communities. And one day, because remember we talked about the Redskins as an example. I know, I know, I know. Right? That was a dream of ours for so long yeah. that we would replace all of the PHP BB <laughs> blog <laughs> forums with Reddit. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't happen on the timeline that I had hoped it would. Mm -hmm. but, but it did happen. It's definitely happened. And that's one of the things I'm most proud of. Because that mm -hmm. was a vision you and I had nine and a half years ago, probably. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, I'd say I mean, 10 years ago. Summer 2005. Yeah. Really, really cool idea. Um, and it's happened now. Um, so it's, it's pretty sweet. But at the time, we, we had this conflict between uh, ease of submission. I didn't want users to have to do anything extra. Well, that was another product philosophy, right? Was there should be as few barriers as possible between the user and what, what they want to do and what you want them to do, right? So submission should really just have URL and title because that's the minimum. Um, any categorization or this and that was, was superfluous. Mm -hmm. I mean, we remember we had categorization for one night. Yes. <laughs> Short-lived, yeah. Um, Alexis, uh, I worked really hard to categorize that. Recategorized every link that had ever been submitted to Reddit into like 25 of like the, you know, what, what we would consider like traditional, yeah. uh, categories. Yeah. And the next morning I woke up and I was like, I think Paul hated it too. And I was like, I don't like it. We're not going to do it. Welcome to life of the non-technical founder. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. That was, yeah, you were actually surprisingly yeah. good sport about that. Yeah. You weren't a great sport. I remember, uh, at least I was, I was definitely aware that you were annoyed. That's reasonable. But, you know, I think we did the right thing. Well, and, and today, you know, we're at a point with about 10,000, a little over 10,000 active communities. Hundreds of thousands of, of random ones, but like 10,000 words. Real like, ones? Yeah. Whatever you're into, there's a Reddit for it. Yeah. And, and figuring out how to get users in front of it. Because that's the thing that kills me. I meet people who say, I love Reddit. I read it every day. And they only talk about the front page. Yeah. They could be diehard. Oh, Red they Wings don't fans, even know. And they have no idea. They don't even know. There's a Red Wings community. Oh, there. man. You know, I, and it's funny because I've internalized like how Reddit works now. And this is something I really like to, I want all users to have this experience. For example, mm -hmm. you know, I've lived in San Francisco now almost nine years. So I'm an actual Warriors fan. Wow. Damn. You uh, really have lived here. Yeah. Wow. And, and so um, it was very exciting. Like when the Warriors won the championship this year. And then immediately after they won, I went to Reddit and I opened up the Cleveland Cavs subreddit <laughs> because I was like, I know that I'm going to see the most authentic whining there is on the internet right here. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to come there and just, just smile and gloat. And it was like a really wonderful thing, but you kind of have to know, like there is a subreddit for anything. And if I yeah. want to enjoy, oh man, I'm really talking, I shouldn't talk so much shit about cleveland but um <laughs> i was really happy that was well, that was great fun if it's if there's any consolation you can be sure that after the super bowl i visited the seattle <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. and just ate it up mm. yeah um mm. so but that's there's no other place on the internet for that no it's you a get critical the, mass uh, of like, the real the authentic community whatever is going on in my real life whatever like I feel like whether I'm watching True Detective, mm -hmm. boy, was that fun. Mm -hmm. um, what was the, what was the podcast that I'm, I'm blanking on the name? The the, the murder oh, one. Oh, serial. Serial, yeah. boy, that was cool when yeah. that was happening. Um, there's a Reddit for everything, and I feel like there's a ninety percent of Reddit users probably have no idea about the serial subreddit. I know, I know, and they would love it if they just did. That's what we got to fix. So yeah, that's a big one. That's what we have to fix. So I don't have I don't have any more screenshots. This probably leaves off. There's no comments. No, there's still no comments. This but is actually, still the summer. But you know what? We don't need a screenshot of the comments because the comment page, the style of that has not changed. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually, from the first comment down, I actually kind of really, I still like that design you did. Um, you oh, know, the, with the arrows and the things. I think that's really nicely. Um, the mechanics, you know, work to be done. But um, the, I, I, I remember that was, I remember very clearly that day we were in our, Washington Street apartment. Um, this is in Somerville. In Somerville. 2000, uh, probably fall, winter 2005. Mm -hmm. I made the first comment feature. Um, I gave it to you to mock it up. And you, I remember the moment you gave me back that mock. So I was just like, because I had tried. 
I had tried to do it myself that time. And I was like, hmm. I'm going to do my best job on this. And then I gave it to you and you gave it back. And I remember thinking, holy shit, this is really nice. This is like so much better than what I did. Um, and that comment, that the structure of a comment with the, the votes in the upper left and the, and, the, and the username up there and the comment and the buttons below it, that has not changed. And like hitting the reply and the reply box appearing like right in the middle, that's not changed since that day. Wow. That's identical. And, and then we've gotten so many like, we didn't do this on purpose, but like so many wonderful jokes where you read – you read the comment and then see the username or sometimes read the username and then see the comment um, where it's just like users have just done some brilliant things with that. And mm -hmm. so the placement of the username on top, I thought uh, was actually really, really important because huh. people have played games with that. Cause I, I'm on a lot of sites. It's usually on the bottom. I don't know. It's a silly little thing, but I, I, I thought th through all of that when I made the decision. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's, 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 it's created some really, um, I remember this one. Do you remember the old spice commercial? Um, the first one with the uh, with the NFL, yeah, guy, yeah. where yeah. he's like, the tickets, the, the tickets are now diamonds. No, no. look Wait. back at me. Look at the, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, what's his name? I, I'm a horse. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody had the username. It was called not now back at the comment. Oh, I the internet. And no. his okay. and his comment was, look at my username. And then his username was now back at the comment. <laughs> and then, and then, and it was, and it was like, this comment is now gold. It was like, oh, it was perfect. so good. It was so good. I remember I was just, I jumped out of my chair. Right <laughs> I, I didn't give them gold because I don't know why users do that. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, but this is, this hits on something, which is uh, a lot of the reason why Reddit has grown 10th biggest site in the country. Now, the reason it's setting so much of the agenda for what people talk about online is because our users come up with such original creative stuff. The button is probably the most recent example, recent podcast about that, BT Dub. But like, I yeah, it, I don't know. People ask about it all the time as if this were some part of our grand plan. No. And I, I can't I give mean, them a good answer. It, there was shades of it in the grand plan mm -hmm. in that I remember Slash that had elements of this. Mm -hmm. True. Where the true. users were incredible. And, and, and I had just hoped but never expected that – we would have that same dynamic where the use like the, the the users are just creating the content and making this amazing thing. And I've just been blown away many, many times about Reddit. Um, I remember one of my other favorite one of my other favorite moments was I was on a conference call at Condé Nast about something. It was dumb. And I was just clicking through Reddit because I was bored on the call. And then this was before this is the reason I added the um, limit to the length of titles. Because somebody had made a giant, full-page, multi-line ASCII version of Fry from oh, Futurama's yes, face. Yes, and I then remember. and then so he did that, and I saw it because it was only like you know five minutes old, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh my gosh!" And actually, I was speechless. I was speechless. I had to hang up on the conference call. I was like, "Guys, I have something I have to deal with," and I hung up. And I'm sitting here looking at this page. I'm just like laughing and laughing and laughing. And then, and then the next the next post came in. Because that was when users realized there's no title length limit, and we can do ASCII <laughs> art, and it, that that's when like Reddit was like overrun with ASCII art, and I went from like happiness, like speechless, like all all, all the phases of what what I would call like uh, Reddit product fear, which is like speechless happiness, uh, bemusement, fear, and then dread. And then this like realization that, oh crap, I can't actually go home. Now I have to fix this because <laughs> <laughs> our site was being ruined by ASCII art, um, which inspired me in my Udacity course to make ASCII Chan, um, which I don't know if that's huh. still running. Huh. ASCII Chan.com. It was, it, was, I, it was Reddit for ASCII art. If I had an internet connection, I would check yeah. that for you. We'll, we'll put that in the show notes. I think I submitted Fry was the first submission of that. Nice. Oh, it comes full yeah. circle. Hit me up with the scotch. Well, so, so that brings up an interesting point. Um, okay. So users figured out there was no submission length and broke the site for a minute. Um, some clever user also guessed what would be the URL when they hit oh, submit boy. and yeah. created the first self post. We should find it. Do you have it? I'm going to look it up and it will be in the show notes, but that's pretty historic, right? Cause yeah. given how much of Reddit's content is now self post. Yes. Yes. So we used a base base 32. Okay, wait. And, and just to be clear, this is 
there was a smart SEO way to do this, and there was the <laughs> other way. way we did. But you know what? Actually, we'll come back to SEO. Okay. Right. Um, I'll tell you I'm how sorry. baller we are at SEO. Please. But okay. Uh, so we use base32 uh, link IDs. And so it's just a number, right? It just increments every time you submit. And so users would submit uh, the URL of the permalink for the link they were submitting. So they would guess what the next ID was. And so then when you click the link, you go straight to the comments page, mm -hmm. which is, of course, the foundation for Ask Reddit, AMA, you know, many, many others. Yeah, majority um, of the content I read today is self-posts like this. It's content that users create. We're not linking somewhere else. Yeah, which is incredible. And so users did this for a while. And then that's when um, uh, I added the self-post feature. So instead of, I cannot believe, this is how, how dorky Reddit was. was like um, title and URL. But if you wanted to do a self-post, instead of a URL, you would just type the word self. <laughs> and people did that. Um, I mean, I guess before that, they were guessing the, the ID, right? So, <laughs> it was an improvement. Um, and so, yeah, we made that feature so much easier to use. <laughs> oh, man, I can't believe um, my current company is Hitmonk, um, which is actually easy to use. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was a very, very important moment. That came before comments, I'm pretty sure. No, 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 no. It oh, had no, it had, had, after, it it had had no reason to exist without a comments. Yeah. Um, so I guess it must have come shortly after comments. Um, probably one of the most fortunate things that we stumbled upon yeah was self posts that was not i don't remember that ever being the plan right we were gonna nope. just link to other people's sites and they no. would love us and they would man, just come back to whoever to that it. user is we, we should, should find them lifetime of gold oh yeah maybe, there you go okay. lifetime of gold forever you are maybe a t-shirt maybe a t-shirt yeah, maybe one of those like lead <laughs> plated bobbleheads <laughs> no lifetime of gold and a t-shirt we can we can dig that up but that really was pivotal and no one who was a reddit employee actually came up with it yeah. Yeah. All we did. Well, you know, I've talked about this a lot um, when I'm talking about startups and like watch your users. That was a good one where it's just like, what are the users trying to do? We were fortunate that our users would try to do stuff, right? They gave us tons of ammunition. Um, but that was like, okay, they're making these self posts. So let's add, let's make that a little bit. Let's make that so brain dead simple by requiring them to type the word self. <laughs> oh gosh. You know, and you had to type the word self for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, till 2008. Like, it was a while. Um, so, well, anyway, hey, it worked. Um, it's pretty cool. Well, it, it's, and it's the kind of thing where um, I think it's easy to take for granted now because standards have risen so much. I mean, there's so many other examples. There's so many, like, this was new territory, yeah. right? When we were doing this, there wasn't a ton of, like... Well, the, the, the one word I would use to describe Reddit for the last 10 years, including now, is authentic. Mm -hmm. And Reddit was like, it was very transparent, right? If you were a programmer, you could see how Reddit worked. It was very, you were sitting on the metal. And so you could guess our bugs, you know, you could guess the mechanics. Mm -hmm. There was nothing flashy or showy. It was just, it was just links. Mm -hmm. And and the very first or earliest versions of Reddit had a message at the top of the page. And I've, I've seen authors actually misattribute Reddit uh, because of it. Um, it was something like your upvotes and downvotes train a recommendation engine. Oh, this? yes. And, yeah. and I've seen, I've seen authors in books actually say like Reddit, Reddit's front page is recommended to you based on your upvotes and downvotes. Uh, but the recommendation engine was like this white whale, right? Yeah. So that, um, <clears throat> was in the first version of uh, the Reddit that we demoed at Demo Day. Mm -hmm. That's what um, we thought was going to work. And the way it worked was a spam filter, that version. I cop so Paul Graham invented the modern-day spam filter, um, the Bayesian classifier. And it was his idea to apply that to content. And so I built that. He actually sent me his code for the email. The first, he sent me the code for the first email spam filter. That, that worked on this on the principle of reading the content. And I adapted that into Reddit headlines and it uh and it never worked. <laughs> <laughs> well and it also and it became a kind of hazing ritual for new developers. Well that was what we put Chris Slow on for a long time. Doctor. Doctor Chris Doctor Slow. Chris Slow. At the time he was Chris Slow. Chris back then. Um 
he would work on his PhD. He was our first employee, started in November of 2005. He would work on his PhD by day. He would get up before both of us. Oh, yeah. He would come home around the time I was getting ready for bed. And then he would stay up and work on the recommendation engine. He'd stay up until I went to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and then still get up yeah. earlier than both he of us wor- He morning. worked two work days. Yeah. Um, oh, and he was just a... Um, Nuclear physicist? Theoretical physicist. Sorry, theoretical physicist yes. at some safety school in Cambridge. Yeah. Um, gosh, what is it? They have a uh, rowing team. I, yeah. Great rowing team. Yeah, great. It's, yeah. it's in my tongue. Not MIT. No. Emerson? <laughs> <laughs> but, but a bright dude. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and incredibly smart. But why, why did recommendations never work? Um, well, you know, why did they never work? Part of it was technology. Part of it is, though, the, the big reason, the reason I attributed at the time, I'd like to try it again someday, but um, the at the time, the argument I made after spending years on this um, was that when you're trying to build a brain, you can be right 95% of the time, but if you recommend a, a stupid article to somebody, they're just like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> oh, can I swear on this? Yes. Okay. There's yeah. no FCC here. Yeah. All right. So. What the fuck is this shit, right? Because they're just like, it's just like, why this recommendation engine is stupid. AI is dead. And, you know, it, 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 you, you have to be perfect when people think there's an AI behind it because their expectations are so high. And, and, then, and then I started to develop these stronger feelings about the, if, 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 you, if you have too much, too much of this AI brain recommendation kind of self-selection, you're going to miss out on a lot of the good content anyway. Um, so that was our attitude for a while after that was, well, let's just let the, like, let serendipity happen, right? And you, you may find yourself clicking on links you never thought you'd click on. Mm-hmm. Like everything, every single thing I've ever clicked on in Advice Animals. <laughs> <laughs> Would, uh, so you, but you, you still think it's worth one of these days trying to reapproach? You know, I think Facebook has done a decent job at it in the newsfeed. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's definitely... Uh, um, for, for me, it's, what, what, what do you, what do you call, um, it's a little too narrow. I think it's overlearned. Um, but it definitely filters out the bad stuff. I just don't think I'm seeing all the good stuff. And so I think, I think it's possible. I think it's possible, but you got to, you know, originally we did it just by headlines and then we did it like kind of traditional collaborative filtering with the votes. Um, and it turns out the collaborative filtering was not very good for recommendations, but it's great for detecting cheaters. Mm-hmm. Um, so we used all that technology for the anti-cheating code, which is not public. Um, and will never will be. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeping um, Reddit safe. Yeah, but that, that's what Chris, he went from the recommendation engine to the anti-cheating stuff. And now in, let's see here. Uh, so we had, oh, let's talk about the Google acquisition offer. Oh, boy. Um, that it was like October, November, of I remember startup that. school, Chris Saka. Yeah. Now he's on the cover of Fortune? Forbes, I presume. Forbes, one of those. Forbes. I heard he's a billionaire. Yeah, he's a billionaire now because of the Twitter thing. They is were it... gonna, they were gonna acquire you and me. And yeah, he. Fold. Yeah, so we met him. He spoke at the first startup school. Yes. No, the second startup school. Oh, that was the first one. Because um, it was 05. It was definitely the first. Okay. Yeah, maybe it was. Yeah. Um, I thought it was in a different venue. Nevertheless, Chris Saka, corp dev guy. Did he finish law school? He had a cool story. Great story. He was like a ski bum, law school for a minute. Yeah, he was in debt. He was in student, yeah. had student debt, went to Google. Yeah. Very, very nice guy. Gave a wonderful talk. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we happened to sit across from him at dinner. Mm-hmm. He liked what we were talking about. Um, invited us out. It's our first trip to the Valley. Yeah. Yeah. And so Paul also set up a, a meeting at Yahoo. Yeah, we're going to talk about that one too. Yeah. So <laughs> so Alexis and I, and, and a VC. Um, oh, 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 yeah, right down the street. One, uh, uh, one Embarcadero, one Market yeah, Street. it's by the water. It's by the ferry building. Yeah. Um, <gasps> I wonder, was it Battery? Gosh, no. I'd know it now. I don't remember what it was. Gosh. Customer? No. Oh, I'm totally blanking on the dude's name. It yeah. Was, it was like a super villain name too. Gosh, we were, oh, we really it. like classic, classic saying all of the wrong things in a VC meeting. Oh, I'm going to uh, find it. 
saying all the wrong things in a in an acquisition meeting too. <laughs> <laughs> we did we do do we do that bad at uh, Google? Uh, at Google, no, because no, because Chris Saka had he didn't put us in that spot. When we went to Google with Chris, mm-hmm. we had a meeting with some tech guys, right. um, including the, a, the Maps dude. The Maps dude, this guy Evan Williams, who I don't know, the blogger. Wait, Evan Williams not with us? Twitter. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, shut the fuck up. Yeah, really? Yeah, he was grilling me on Lisp. No way. Yeah, dude. At the time, at this the, whole time, I had no fucking idea. At the time, he was the blogger guy. No. <laughs> yeah, because Google had just bought Blogger. Are you fucking? Kidding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, mind blown. He okay. asked me why we use Lisp, and I said because I could use hash tables um, and keep. Oh my gosh! Was he satisfied with that answer? Um, I don't remember. Are you and then he had to leave. With that he had to leave. Uh, well, um, well, how come you never told me this, Evan Williams? Yeah, I had no idea. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he was there. He had to leave because Google News was under attack. I think he did something with Google News for a little while or something. Okay. Um, anyway, um, <clears throat> so yeah, we had that tech meeting. That was pretty chill, though. And then Chris gave us this like tour, thirty yeah. minute tour of Very Google. Nice tour. Um, we had lunch and we left. Um, and when we when we got home, he called us later and gave us an acquisition offer. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I forget. You know, we got in trouble for talking about this the first time. Can we talk about it now? Yeah, no, I got in trouble for yeah. blabbing about it to a Boston Globe reporter. Yeah, so uh, they they made an offer. It was a, it was a, it was a small offer. Um, Do you remember they wanted us? They want, uh, the, the only thing that stuck in my head apparently. Was that they were like, what would happen if we added Reddit comments to YouTube? Oh, no. Yes. Really? Yes. Wow. No, I. I uh, Imagine a world if YouTube in 2005 had been implanted with a real with Reddit comments. Hey, yeah. Google, you should still do that. It's not too late, God, Google. We're open source. YouTube comments. Um, making Reddit look good since 2005. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, that is the dregs of the internet. Uh, anyway. Um, all right, so Saka makes us an Aquahire offer. Aquahire offer. Um, we actually said no, um, but That's we were, hard. it was hard. Yeah. It's fucking Google. And we, um, we dude, like, he gave a very strong pitch. Yes. And Google, this is Google in 05. It's a dream company. Shit. Yeah. It wasn't Google dream now. Company. Yeah. It was the company you wanted to work for. <laughs> yeah. And we were fresh, like four months out of college. No, five. Yeah. Like five, six months out of college. Yeah. It was cool. Getting yeah. wine and dine in Silicon Valley. Um, at the Googs. Yeah. They made us, they treated us very, very nicely. Very nicely. Um, and we said no, mm-hmm. uh, wisely. Yeah. And, you know, it blew up a little bit because we talked that we should never have talked about no, that it. That was my fault. I yeah. told a reporter I thought it was off the record. And she oh, she, she, it. uh, it was a little diabolical though. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I was naive. I was stupid. That's yeah. on me. Because we tried not to talk about it. And she yeah. was like, well, I'm not going to write the story if you don't tell me. And yeah, yeah I, I remember that. Cause, uh, cause it's not totally on you because you asked my opinion and I agreed with you. No, I know. But like, I, stuff, I, yeah, it's. The things you learn. So we yeah, shouldn't. We should. We should have kept the mustard. That would have been learn. the classy thing to do. But yes, we were excited. We were kids. We wanted to. Yeah. You know. Google. Yeah. It was Google. A big deal. It was a big they deal had. Do you, okay. I know you remember the little individual. They had little baby pools that had strong currents just for doing laps yeah. in like a confined space. Yeah, it was cool, man. Oh man, that was Google's prime. Candy definitely. everywhere. Yeah. So that was a good meeting. That was a great meeting. And then we met with Yahoo. Yeah, Yahoo. Um, <laughs> Not so great. I have <laughs> never forgotten that meeting. I, I want to hear you tell this story because I tell this story all the fucking time. Are we naming names? Do we do that? I've mm-hmm. never done it, but I think at this point you probably can. I, I, gosh, no, I, sh- I, I, can't. I can't. Really? You know, I just, you know, it's, you know what I've learned? What have you learned, Steve? Don't talk shit about people when the camera's rolling. All right, fair enough. But fair nevertheless, enough. There, so we had this meeting with Yahoo product people. Yeah, an executive at Yahoo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he's not an executive at Google. Yes. Um, I should check his Google Plus profile. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, I wonder how that... <laughs> I bet he keeps his Google Plus profile active. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah, brought that, that Yahoo touch to Google. Um, so they had just... They had bought Delicious. Mm-hmm. Um, they were building a competitor to Delicious called MyWeb 2.0. <laughs> because of course they just bought delicious yeah it makes so sense like, right so why don't can, we why don't we build that yeah let's see how that goes um and they were talking to us and they said the words that i will never forget you know they asked what your traffic was and we told them um it was small i don't remember the exact number but it was it was quite small and and he said you're a rounding error 
And, uh, you know, I, it's hard to say that meeting never recovered because what would it have recovered to, right? <laughs> it was, it was going from Google to Yahoo was like going from, gosh, it was like this Google was this like comical, like ut- nerd utopia. Mm-hmm. Where we had this like gentleman, Chris Saka, take us around, yeah, why introduce us to everybody. Us? Oh, everybody yeah. took time out of the day to talk to us. So nice. It was sunny and beautiful. And I remember we went to Yahoo and it's like, where is everybody? Yeah. <laughs> they just turned everything purple too. They were really proud of the new people. Yeah, um, it was really bad. Um, and and they were so rude to us and so mean. I'll never forget it. And, and, I, and please don't edit this part out. Hitmonk is a Yahoo partner now. And it is totally different around there. Hmm. Um, I told like when we first met with Yahoo um, for, for the Hitmonk deal, um, that was the, I told that story, mm-hmm. the exact story, and I named names because nice. I still had a bit of a chip on my shoulder. And, um, and I was like, I hope this goes better. And it did go much, much yeah, better. Props like, so I actually, yes, I am actually um, there. We, we go down to Yahoo frequently now because we work fairly closely with them. And, uh, it is not the zombie war zone that it was back in 2005. <laughs> but, but dude, like, wow. do you think – I mean, okay, so obviously that meeting went pretty poorly afterwards. And if you all can't tell by now, like, Steve's much less guarded about his emotions <laughs> than I am. Because I remember at that moment, like, that it was so clear – Zero fucks were given after that point because they had so disrespected well, us. Well, you know what? I mean, he did us a favor, right? You know, yeah. that, that that motivated us for years and maybe still True. does. Oh, like, dude, I still will does. never forget that. I still have it. Um, I, I, have a, I have a Dropbox. And, 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 and when I meet young startup founders, mm-hmm. I just think back and think, I don't ever want somebody to think of me like I think of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe I'd be, I guess I mean it motivated us. Maybe maybe I should talk more shit to people. It'd be doing them a favor. Uh, well, no, I think I, I obviously things worked out. Um, I wonder. I've not met him since. Yeah, we're obviously all in the same circles. Yeah, I want to go up to him and thank him and just. Be, I'm sure he doesn't remember the meeting. He, I, I doubt it. I doubt meeting, right. But I want to thank him so badly because he's provided so much motivation yeah you know we were just uh kids who didn't know what they were doing and i feel like we left that meeting with a mission yeah a chip on our shoulder man that went on the wall dude that literally it literally went on the wall you were around in your because of him um and and do you think it would have been i mean especially especially because it was after that google meeting which was yeah. clearly – here was the company that was clearly the biggest game in town. Yeah. It treated us so well and was so kind and was so interested. And then this. Yeah. It was night and day. Night and day. We went home just thinking Google's the future. Yahoo's dead. Yeah. Do you remember Do you remember the Metallica mix CD we had? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, it's a goofy moment. Um, nobody's going to be interested in this story. But this is one of goofy. We were walking through San Francisco. <laughs> yes, yeah, on the ground. Remember this? Yes. And and and, <laughs> and we were like, I don't remember the exact conversation, but something uh, like, "Hey, we don't have any music. <laughs> we should burn a Metallica CD. We need to get some CDRs." This is 2005. Yeah, we for need the kids to, listening. Yeah, it's we, let's find a drugstore, get some CDRs, <laughs> and that's a burnable CD. Mm. Um, a CD is like a uh, <laughs> what would you say? It's like describe a, it to the kids. Yeah, it's like a coaster you used to put in your computer. Yeah. Kind of shiny. It would hold things on yeah. it. Um, well, you could make these things, right? And so you could burn your music to it. And so we're like, we need a CDR. We can make a Metallica mix. And then literally five seconds later, we look down yeah. and there's a broken jewel case with mm-hmm. an unwritten CDR in it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. A sign of what? Right, I it's I, I don't know, man. It was it was meant to be, and, and then burned I burned a CD. Yeah. yeah. Do you still have that CD? You know, I, wonder, I, I have a CD spindle that I've carried with me for a long ass yeah. time. Maybe. How trippy was that? There's a maybe. How trippy is that? But I remember we listened to it on the way back uh, to the airport, and then uh, you know, we went back to Boston. Uh, took that motivation and uh, and put it towards Reddit, and literally, I I have a thing on our wall that said, "You are a rounding error." Yeah. Uh, do you like, so there was that moment, right? And, and we could have, right. It could have been bought by Google Yeah. and, and we decided not to, yep. but then 
let's see, that was November, and then so January, like 11 months later ish, in October of 2006, we decided to be acquired by Con and Ast. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that. Oh boy. So that, I mean, that was an exciting time. At the time, I did not regret it at all. You know, our mentality, but there's, there's a couple aspects to my thinking at the time, mm-hmm. which I think was your thinking, but I don't recall specifically anymore. I'll start with my side of the story, mm-hmm. which was um, we're fairly dysfunctional. Mm-hmm. Aaron was with us at the time. He, he, had, he had lost interest in Reddit. Right. And so just some background. So we acquired or merged with Infogami in like January of 2006. Yeah. It was Aaron Swartz's company. He was in our batch. Mm-hmm. Um, him and I did some good work together for a couple of months. And, but he eventually lost interest in Reddit because we had this kind of deal that uh, we'd, do a, we'd work on Reddit and Infogami, but really we only ever worked on Reddit. And Infogami was his startup from yeah. Y Combinator. And we, we tried to create this idea that Reddit and Infogami were really the same startup. Um, there's actually some interesting ideas in there. Nevertheless, Aaron had lost interest. Um, so he wasn't doing anything really. Um, Chris was still splitting time, mm-hmm. um, working on the recommendation engine, which we weren't really using. Um, and I was doing everything I could to just kind of keep the site online and keep in mind, I was still learning, you know, how to do this. And we were growing. Like that's the crazy thing about Reddit. Yeah. It just consistently Always grew. Yeah, week always over grew. week over week yeah. over week. We didn't add it. We didn't, I, I don't I don't remember adding features during that time. I remember doing a lot of work scaling, mm-hmm. figuring out how to, how, to, how to add more machines to our architecture because we didn't have a good architecture. And what's – and sorry to interrupt, but like what's, what's wild is by like – go back in time a little bit. By the time we were having conversations with Google, we had had commenting at that point obviously because mm-hmm. they were interested in bringing it over. Like we had yet had user-created Reddits. No. But like for core Reddit functionality, it was all there. Like Pretty much. The thing that today powers the front page of the internet – was there in the fall of 05. Pretty much, yeah. And we had Lipstick.com. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> we'll, come, we'll come back to, we'll come back to Lipstick. first effort in uh, rebranding um, Reddit. Yeah. And Reddit was also early on the doom and gloom of the economy. Yeah. So we had this mentality of, um, well, this thing got way bigger than we ever thought it would be. We're not very productive right now. Mm-hmm. And the economy is going to, you know, poo itself soon. So... You know, maybe we should try to, you know, it wasn't, we, we never sell, maybe we should try to sell because kind of came to us, but we were pretty receptive. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was the mentality under which we sold. And I remember when we sold, I was very happy. Mm-hmm. I was very oh, excited. Yeah. Dude, I was, it was life changing. It was, uh, it was excitement and then relief. I still remember, I still remember, uh, I think, I don't remember which one of us left first. Okay. I remember, I remember like, it was either a handshake, possibly a hug, at the very least a handshake, but like some kind of like like mutual relief sigh thing. It was the day before we signed. Okay. Because uh, I cried. I was like so relieved, right? Mm-hmm. I was just so happy that it was finally over because the negotiation took forever. Forever. It took months. Yeah. It was very stressful. Lawyers um, and all kinds of bullshit. And... Yes, I remember that moment of relief. And then the next day, we actually signed the papers and they wired the money. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really feel anything at that point because I was just like dead. Not dead, drained. (laughs) (laughs) I was just drained. I had already gone through all of that. Um, Yeah, that was was pretty wild. Uh, But I was very happy. Um, You know, we had no idea, of course. Like Reddit felt like a big site then. And at, at every moment since then, it's felt like a big site. It just keeps growing. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. And, you know, there were, uh, so the next three years, launch user-created subreddits. Um, anyone can build a Reddit community. Obviously, that has led to the massive growth that Reddit's at today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, we can talk about lipstick. I guess we can, I remember, I mean, I still remember the half dozen like awful C names that I came up with, like the cute list yeah. for r slash awe and trying to build all these nascent communities. I remember the cute list. I forgot about that. Oh, poor cute list. Yeah. I mean, I, I wasted probably a year trying to build a dozen new brands for C names for subs. So instead of ours, in, 
because the thinking was like, oh, there's no way in hell people are going to go to red.com slash r slash aw. They'll go to the cute list. And that was so wrong. It's, it's hard to build one brand, let alone like yeah, a dozen. Yeah, and, and we, we tried to replicate things that we had done early because with lipstick. Like lipstick. Um, which was a celebrity gossip one. I, I re-enabled the admin page where you could create usernames. Right, right, right. And so me and a half dozen housewives, Midwestern housewives, would submit mm-hmm. content to the lipstick. Which was Reddit for Celebrity Gossip, funded by Condé Nast. Pre- if you, if pre-acquisition. R slash gossip. Yes. I think it's still there. It turned into gossip. Um, and it didn't it didn't not work, but it just reminded me how much work it was, and it wasn't as fun because it wasn't the content that I was interested in. But I did spend every morning reading all the celebrity news sites, submitting the links, making up usernames. And I remember my, my trick to usernames uh, was I would just add GRL to the everything. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. Um, uh, but the, <laughs> um, it actually, it, it was starting to, like, there were signs of life, but it was slow going. It was slow going. Um, but, you know, the, the the lesson there was that the, that was not as authentic as the original Reddit, and it's a lot of a lot of the other communities that have have grown since then, mm-hmm. definitely. And so, what now? Like, Reddit is independent again. What What do you hope for Reddit going forward? Well, the thing that's always been important to me is Reddit should always feel small. You know, mm-hmm. Reddit is massive, but it should feel small. You know, it should feel like your home, and by and large, Reddit still feels that way, but I think its growth is sometimes limited by some of the mechanics that we haven't solved yet. Um, like what? A subreddit discovery is a big one. Mm-hmm. You know, we've alluded to that to a number of times. Mm-hmm. You know, I think everybody, literally everybody, has a home on Reddit somewhere, but they can't find it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, or they don't think of Reddit as, you know, the place for them because they only know Reddit's front page or they only know, you know, whatever Reddit story they heard in the news. Um, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. But, you know, Reddit is so, so deep. Um, and I think so that that one of the big challenges is is exposing new users to that without compromising the existing community. And that's a very it's a very difficult challenge, though. After this quick break, Steve and I will discuss what we wish to see in the next 10 years of Reddit. This episode is brought to you by Ting, and we're joined today by Jesse Sims, the content coordinator at Ting. He's speaking to us again on another one of his new favorite phones. I am talking to you right now on the Blue Studio Mini LTE. Uh, The Studio Mini LTE is actually a device that costs 120 bucks. Um, It has 4G LTE, so the latest and greatest um, network access, and that's on our GSM offering. Um, and it has a five megapixel camera, it runs Jelly Bean, and it's really pretty sweet. Uh, and it's kind of like the, ne- the the new movement for Android devices, which is these inexpensive devices that are normally a little bit cheaper than 200 bucks, and they work just as great as the flagships. So, well, you know, a few years ago, a lot of Android devices um, weren't that great, especially the cheaper ones. Uh, It really is the opposite today, and you can build a solid device with a solid camera that works and does exactly what you want it to do for not much more than 100 bucks. So if you're interested in a device that uh, isn't that expensive and you'd like to try out Ting and it doesn't work with your current phone, head to the Ting shop and you'll see a ton of devices that are pretty cheap um, that might be what you're looking for. As I mentioned earlier, Ting has no contracts. You can either bring your existing phone or purchase a new one from their online store. Jesse explains why having contracts are not the most wise economic decisions. So what's interesting about contracts is that a lot of people will think that because a phone is zero dollars or only fifty dollars or a hundred dollars up front, they're actually saving money in the long run. Um, but they're really not. Uh, what happens is that when you when you have a set monthly plan, so you know a fifty dollar plan or a sixty dollar plan, the cost of your phone is actually in that rate, and you're actually paying back a lot more than what the phone costs over a two year period. Uh, So with Ting, you actually purchase your device outright, you own it, you know, you could bring it to another carrier, you know, if you like Ting, but you say, oh, I could get a cheaper bill with T-Mobile or, oh, maybe with AT&T or, you know, another MVNO, like then really you could take your phone and bring it there. While talking to my friends about Ting, I realized that so many people haven't switched yet because they're on a family plan. 
But Jesse points out this is also a more expensive option than Ting. So the difference with Ting and family plans is that with Ting, it's just $6 per device on your account. So you could have six, seven devices. Each of them are only $6 per month. And then you guys share the minutes, messages, and megabytes that you use. But the interesting part too is, is that as you start using more usage, your bill ends up getting a little bit cheaper as well with Ting. So, you know, the more people that are on one account with the usage pooled in total, each device actually gets a lot cheaper. And what's interesting, I think, is um, the average monthly bill for four devices on Ting, I think is around $61, which is pretty crazy. So if you are on a family plan, it is definitely worth considering a switch. If you're interested in learning more, go to r slash ting, that's reddit.com slash r slash ting, and feel free to PM Jesse on Reddit at Action Jesse, just A-C-T-I-O-N-J-E-S-S-E, all one word. When you decide to join Ting, go to upvoted.ting.com, and you'll get $25 in Ting credit or $25 off of a new device. That's upvoted.ting.com. So in 2010... August of 2010, I crashed on your sofa for a week um, to draw a mascot for you guys to get ready for the launch of Hitmonk. Yeah. For the last five years, as you pointed out, you all have been working on Hitmonk. Mm -hmm. How big is the team over there? 72 people. And you're the CTO Mm -hmm. of a 72-person company that ships really great product. I'm biased because I'm a shareholder, but really, Hitmonk is really well designed. I actually sent you an email because I – did you recently update the web search? I've been using mobile for a minute. It's been um, glowing. It's looking crisp. Growing, you know, consistently. Yeah. Well, we have a very good product. It's crisp. Real, real crisp. Thank you. They they will – I'll pass that along. And I – and so I I was just curious, like, so what – you know, when you, over the last five years, you've basically done it all over again with a very anti-social website. Yeah, right, <laughs> man. Well, you know, because I thought when we started Hitmonk, well, websites are easy. All you have to do is build a mediocre product, and users will just come. <laughs> <laughs> Little did you know. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. harder than that. Um, but but you've had the experience succeeding with now a totally anti-social product in an mm-hmm. industry that is not the most forward-thinking, and where. You know, there's a ton of competition, right? At the end of the day, Hitmonk's inventory, you know, your butt in a seat on a Delta flight or in a Starwood hotel is the same as everyone else's. To yep. Basic it's a, it's extent, a crowded, right? hostile space. It is very, very, um, you know, you have to make something great or else people are just not going to care. Mm-hmm. Um, what lessons have you learned from that that you, you know, feel like, you know, if you had a time machine, you could take back and apply to Reddit? Well, let's start with humility. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hitmonk's tough. Um, I thought my attitude at the time when we started Hitmonk was I have learned so many good lessons. I, I can't wait to apply them to the next startup. Mm-hmm. Hitmonk is not going to make any of the mistakes that Reddit made. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've had so few opportunities to make the mistakes that Reddit made because the companies are so different. Um, and so for Hitmonk, you know, we care very much about the product, of course. I thought when we were starting the company that we were building a product and technology company. And that's a big part of it. But the brand is very, very important. Our marketing team is critical. Our BD team is critical. You know, we didn't have any of these roles for a while at Hitmonk. And it took us a while to kind of get the right teams for us. Um, But there, there is so much that goes into it. Right? This is very complex. Where do we find users? How do we acquire these users? Tracking them through the entire site. Conversion is just so, so, so important. Um, and then the keeping employees engaged and excited about the company, even though they don't use it every day. You know, at Reddit, mm-hmm. we did a lot of what we would call QAing, um, <laughs> which was basically, you know, read Reddit all day. Mm-hmm. And that worked out really nicely because <clears throat> everybody who worked at Reddit had a very very intuitive sense of where what things were working and what things weren't. Um, whereas at Hitmonk, you know, we only travel a handful of times a year. Um, you know, I don't stay in a hotel every night, uh, but I click on a Reddit link every day. So, um, and, and, and the other big difference is um, on Reddit, the users were very similar to us in the early days in, in particular, right? So we would just build features that we wanted and, and I used to have this expression at Reddit all the time. Like, I'm not a snowflake. Everything that I like, there's probably 10 million other people who like the same thing. And so I'll just build stuff that I like, and therefore I was pleasing 10 million people. 
um, at Hitmonk, I am not our user. Um, and so that's required a different set of kind of product discipline, of like build something for our users, not just ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, the, the flip side of that is, is the work is very fulfilling because everything we've, every user we have, we know we earned. And so you, you can see like, I did this, therefore it's working. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas on Reddit, it was a little bit different because sometimes the site would be down for a day and we'd turn it back on and traffic would go up. And so like, well, maybe we should take the site down every day. <laughs> <laughs> Correlation is not equal causation. Yeah. Uh, and so there, there's a very direct feedback loop. It's just, the um, doesn't move as, as quite as much of, uh, as inertia as Reddit did. Mm-hmm. Is there, so there is a lot, this is something that comes up or has come up quite a bit. I'd say in the last uh, eight, nine months or so since I've been back, what is the, for you, what was the goal of Reddit in 2005? What were the, cause there are lots of people who want to prescribe on us what yeah. the ideals of Reddit were. So what are the, what 2005, the ideals of Reddit? I'm going to, I want to hear your answer to this too. Okay. But do you want me to do it first? Do you do yours? Go ahead. You go first. I've been doing okay. a lot of talking. The modest, Naive 2005 goal was Mm -hmm. let's do something that doesn't suck so that we can keep doing it and not have to get real jobs. Mm -hmm. The lofty, like, and I remember having this conversation with you late night in that fucking crappy little apartment above the neighbor who would go through our mail. Like the idea that this could, especially because like, oh, five Colbert was just getting started. People were pretty frustrated with government. Like Mm -hmm. this idea that the media wasn't really doing its job. Like in the best case scenario, Reddit could be this place where anyone, anywhere in the world could come, find a community of people who share their interests, their desires, their geography or their whatever, and decide for themselves what was the most important thing or what they should be talking about and talk about it. And and that was the the goal of it. And we, we talked about the I, – I remember talking about the, the r slash Redskins example or some yep. idea of yep. knowing yep. – We've made it when our favorite football team, which admittedly has a masochistic fan base, has a presence on the site because we're mainstream enough that like it works for diehard fans to come and show up and talk about their yep. masochistic passion. Um, Did you mean racist or masochistic? No, I meant masochistic. Okay. I mean, I know. The name <laughs> is not great. But right. we're masochistic because we're still fans of the skins after all these years. Oh, of- oh. <laughs> <laughs> But the hope, <laughs> the hope would be that Reddit could be a place where fans of even our uh, rather uh, masochistic fan base yes. uh, could come and commiserate, but also talk about yep. their team and, and the things that they're passionate about. And, and, and I remember you having that motivation as well. Mm-hmm. And I remember uh, freedom from the press yeah. was one of my favorite taglines that you came up with. And a friend of ours was wearing that t-shirt the other day. Really? Yeah. Those shirts are like vintage, man. Yeah. It, was, it was Leslie. Dude, uh, seriously? Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, it was really it was heartwarming. Leslie, put that on eBay. Um, we should, we'll bring those shirts back. Yeah. We're bringing from the press. Back. So I remember you came up with that probably the first week, maybe even before we actually started. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, no, my motivation was I didn't want to look stupid in front of Paul Graham. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But that was your short-term motivation. Uh, yeah. So that was, you know, that was part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think I had a natural like competitiveness. Like I just want this to succeed because I want it to succeed. Mm -hmm. There's like, there, there was, it didn't, it wasn't deep. Um, and that was actually my motivation for a while. You know, I didn't want to let Paul down. I didn't want to let you down. Um, I didn't want my parents to be correct and that I should get a real job. Um, and so I, you know, I, I mostly just wanted to live up to my, you know, expectations um, and other people's expectations. And it was in August, that day in August, when the site worked without us doing anything. Mm-hmm. That's when my motivation changed from, I don't want to let people down to, I don't want to let the Reddit community down. That's when it turned into more of an obligation. Like mm-hmm. we have a community. This is a real thing. It felt big to us at the time. Because I don't think we had any expectations of how big it could be. And so it was like, let's just make sure this continues to work. Um, And that was my motivation for, oh, just about the, I mean, really until now, you know, um, through when I left. And that's still the the thing that uh, 
keeps me thinking about Reddit is like, you know, I just want this thing to continue to exist because it's such a force for good in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And what, I mean, there is, can we talk about the speech thing? Speech, the free speech thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. What, what do you feel like is, or was the goal of Reddit? when it comes to enabling expression and free yeah, speech. Yeah, so that was something you and I, without, I don't recall having an explicit discussion on it, but we just, we, we I think we saw eye to eye on that, which was Reddit is not going to ban content. Mm-hmm. Like, we are going to be authentic. Like that's, that, that was big to us. We didn't use the word authentic, but we just felt like, you know, we don't have to. And it makes us stronger when we don't because the content that like most of the content, then there was, there was no racist or any really dark side of Reddit at the time. It was just kind of anti Reddit. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that like hurt our feelings, but we felt like, you know, we can, we should take this, right? It's good there, for us. There would be a story on the front page that was like, why was the site down? You guys are idiots. There's always a story on the front yeah. page like that. There was <laughs> at the time. There's always a story about how much Reddit sucked on the front page. Well, and, and to that point, we didn't ban it. But mm-hmm. instead, like you'd be in the comments being like, here's what happened. I Doing used our this best. library yeah. that sucked or whatever. Whatever it was. Um, sometimes it's just like Reddit sucks, content's going to shit. And yeah, we do our best to defend it. We take our medicine. Um, but we felt that was a genuine conversation. It was very important. And there, I remember it was challenged early on um, with the racist stuff. Um, a lot of N-word, this and that. And so... I can't remember if we had a conversation, but I remember my feeling was, I'm certain we had a conversation about this actually, um, was it's okay if people are talking about the N-word. It's just not okay if they're using it hatefully. And so we said, okay, we'll ban, I'll ban that Mm -hmm. because it's easy to justify. I can stand behind that. Um, And so from then on, we've been walking this line of what is... You know, where walking this line where we don't actually know where the line is, right? The, the wherever the line is, our users will walk right up against it, mm-hmm. and 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 so it's such a tricky issue that people should be able to express their ideas. Um, but there's always been a line, and it's always been, I think, a a a, a thing on our minds of like what is appropriate and what's not and what undermines the community and what doesn't and what's good for the world and what what isn't and so that was a burden that was ultimately i remember one of the reasons why when i when my contract expired that i left is i was i was burned out i felt like i was carrying that burden and it and it was a lot um i've since gotten over that i think as my feelings have solidified but we didn't um I don't, I don't think we knew quite as concretely then as, as we do now, quite our, our, our feelings on those things. Mm-hmm. I mean, what was your take on it? Do you remember, do you remember that? Your I, I remember the discussion. I mean, I remember banning because of course, okay, this was one, this was effectively one Reddit community. It was before user created mm-hmm. Reddits. Yeah. Um, and you'd get those commenters who'd show up just dropping racial epithets for yep. no reason. And yep. it was clear, like it was basically spam. Yep. There was nothing, nothing of value was an easy ban. Yeah, yeah. and I banned them the same way I would ban a spammer. Yes, because it was, the same, it was effectively spam. It was the same set of tools. And, and, and I know that there is this tricky, uh, there is this tricky line because none of this stuff, I mean, no one's charted this territory before where you have, right, Reddit, YouTube's, we've already dogged them. YouTube's the one exception where like, there's only one other platform where hundreds of thousands or a million plus people can all have a discussion, so to speak, about mm-hmm. a thing. And like yeah. YouTube is clearly a clusterfuck. Um, and on Reddit, although plenty of times it goes poorly, um, more often than not, the commenting system and, and the user base, it kind of just works out. And it's never going to be perfect trying to find that balance, but... I always want to err on the side of people feeling free to express themselves. It's just figuring out where we want to draw a line where it becomes toxic for the like overall platform. Yes. For the and, ecosystem. And that's where the line is in my head, which is, does it threaten the integrity of the community? Mm-hmm. Um, and Reddit's is big, right? And to put it in perspective, I have to bring this up all the time. We would be one of the 10th large, I think 
number eight or nine largest countries in the world. It's crazy. Of, like, like, that's insane. I remember I used to think. That's insane. I used to go to bed thinking something I did affected a million people today. <laughs> and yeah. now it's like a hundred million people. Dude. I, more? What, whatever. 173 it? million. That's million. crazy. It's like bananas. I did an interview with this German reporter yesterday and I was like, there are two Germany's worth of people on Reddit. And, and like, that's it, right. And that's, that's a borderless world. That's where there are people yeah. literally from all the world having discussions and, 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 and so it's, them. I think it, it's such a, it's such a powerful thing for people to feel comfortable expressing themselves. But feeling comfortable is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, because at the end of the day, the, the philosophies, the pillars of Reddit are the same now as they were back in the day, which is the community should feel small. It should feel like home. It should feel welcoming. Mm-hmm. And some people have like distasteful Thanksgiving conversations. Mm-hmm. Um but that's what they are, right? They're limited to like their family, their community. And, and there's others that I think bleed out of those bounds that affect others in, in very negative ways. And I, 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 that, that's in my mind where the line is right now. It's like, are you making somebody else's life worse? And I don't want, I don't want Reddit to ever make somebody's life worse. Wow. Um, that, um, that, that, that is, it's, it's, it's tricky to, um, to uphold that, but that that's kind of my decision making process. When I when I try to think like, how do I feel about particular issues? Is like, did we make somebody's life better or worse today? And we have we have an opportunity with the scale that we have to do a lot of like empathy creation, right? People can get an understanding of their fellow human beings on Reddit oh, in totally. a way that they could never get anywhere else. Well, it's an honest conversation you can have immediately about it on any topic. Mm-hmm. And, <clears throat> you know, it's, you know, we, we've been fortunate to have like many deep friendships with, you know, ourselves and other, other people. Um, I feel like not, not, not everybody has that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and so their friends exist on Reddit. And I think that's very, very important that people can have those like honest, authentic conversations. Um, and so I'm, I'm so very proud that that Reddit ex- serves as a platform for those people. Um, and that's worth preserving. And, and I don't think Reddit gets enough credit for quite how many social bonds it facilitates, um, whether between individuals or groups of people or, or you know, um, or, or what, whatever. But it's, it's pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible. I'm very, very happy for that. It is. I I have the privilege with all the traveling that I get to do and meeting redditors all like literally all over the world, man. It's insane. It's cool. The people who are so grateful because they met some stranger on R slash I don't know what who helped them for no reason other than they just wanted to help. Like it's it's impressive and and it it. I don't, it makes me hopeful that it can do even more uh, because we've only started to scratch the surface of what those relationships can do. I really do think one day your identity on Reddit online will mean as much or more than your identity on Facebook or your real name will online. Well, you can have many Reddit usernames. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but those those relationships, right? Whether it's people gifting to their uh, to mm-hmm. some random person on Secret mm-hmm. Santa, or whether it's some Redditor doing a snack exchange and r slash snack exchange, or, mm-hmm. or whatever, like people have an identity, even if their username is Spez. Yeah, like that means as much as their name, Steve, or more, or more. That's crazy. The world has never seen that before. And it was a silly project we started in college. I know, I know. it's crazy. It's crazy, um, but it is what it is. Um, you know, I'm, I, I, I always uh, am reluctant to ever take credit for Reddit, but I always proudly take credit for not fucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can't, right? At the end of the day, users make it everything that it is. No, oh, yeah, honestly, and we yeah. facilitated that, and we did not fuck it up. Yeah, I mean, because as you know, we were the first. 100 users. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> but that that like I I really I I'm I'm happy to hear you say that because I think 
Or we're, this is the 10-year anniversary. Man. Pretty wild. God. Pretty wild, yeah. Like, what, what, what do you hope will happen with Reddit for the next 10 years? Billion users? Got to give me a billion users, man. We can we can be the foil oh, to easy. Facebook. Oh, easy, easy, yeah, easy. I think you know Facebook's for your real identity. Mm-hmm. Facebook is for your real name identity. Reddit is for your real. Reddit identity. is for your real identity. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Yes. Um, oh, easy, easy. Um, there's just so much more depth there, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, this, this, there's there's like magic when you're on the site, and and I think if we preserve that, but um, you know, enhance the mechanics and continue to make it a safe, welcoming, fun, hilarious, you know, authentic place. You know, there's no ceiling. The only ceiling is the number of people on the internet. All right. That's reasonable. Front page of the internet. I'm, right? Dude, I, and it's funny because PG just kind of riffed that out in that meeting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what you should do? Yeah. Make the front page of the internet. <laughs> yeah, why don't you just do that? Just do that. All right, Paul. all right. Give us your money. <laughs> well, do you have anything else you want to let the listeners know? Well, I mean, I feel like I've talked a lot. Let's see. Um, it is pretty incredible that Reddit even exists, considering the amount of World of Warcraft we played that summer. <laughs> just because we both were level sixty. Yeah, it's really. Did you? But that was that was I was all we did other than work on Reddit. It's pretty pretty. We did not go out. Do, do you remember when your dad came to visit and we had dinner with him? He dropped us off at the apartment. We said night. That's right. We played Warcraft, all and then long. he came back the next morning for breakfast, and, and we had been up. All- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good time. Uh, I also remember this is just random thoughts now. Mm-hmm. I remember I was so happy one night there was a thunderstorm. And we lost power, so I didn't have to work. I, was like, <laughs> oh. I can take a break. Oh. <laughs> I like, I have an excuse. There's you, no power. Couldn't, you couldn't play WoW either. I know that was that was heartbreaking. What was there left to do? That was heartbreaking. Okay, one last one last random story that that is is funny. Is uh, remember we had AOL was our internet. We had dial up internet in that no. first apartment. No. Yeah. And wait, really? Yeah, for like a couple of days, and. We somehow racked up huge overage charges. And so I used to use, like, when I needed to talk to somebody on the phone, I would get you to do it. And so you would, you were pretending to be Steve. And you were arguing with the person about, like, our bill is outrageous. This is so fucked up. You shouldn't have charged us for this. And then, like, you weren't getting in progress. Like, fine, I'm going to let you talk to my boss, Alexis. And then you handed the phone to me. And then I, and then I had to be Alexis. And I was like... Man, this is like, like I, we. I remember like doing my best to lay into this person. It just wasn't sticking. <laughs> Do we not get a? We didn't get a rebate or anything. Um, I don't think so. Damn it! They charged us like two hundred fifty bucks for four days of dial-up oh, AOL. I do remember this. Fuck. And I remember we were just like weaving this web of lies. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to save money, man. Just trying to get that bill refunded. Damn, we never did. I think that computer still exists. Deer Park. It was that that black that black machine. Somebody owns that. Really? Yeah. Do you know where it is? It's either at the Reddit. I think it's at the Reddit office. That's internet history, man. I saw it somewhere. We because we donated our two laptops, and oh, well, PG ended up buying it in the auction. But the two laptops that built Reddit are now in the possession of Paul Graham. All of the original Reddit servers are at Hitmix office. Motherfucker. Yeah, the Steve and Alexis and Chris and Jessica. Yeah. They're all still labeled, and they're in Hitmonk's office. What are they? Are they they're not even plugged in, are they? No, they're sitting on the floor. Apparently, uh, somebody gave them to David King. Bring so them back. He Bring claimed them back he, the he claims office, he owns man. them. I was like, you know, you, no, you I was like, fuck you, you don't. No, please, like, you, those are, you built those out of that was a new egg order. Yeah, yeah. Assembled like, them in the apartment. I was like David, you could have a couple of them, but the yeah. one that says Steve on it. I want the Alexis one. Yeah. We really have it. Bring those over. Yeah, have them. Bring those over. Okay. Anyway, you gonna bring them? Yeah, of course. Okay. Nobody's touching them. They're right, useless. They're, they probably have old Reddit code on them. Oh, I can't remember the root password to save my life. Let me figure it out. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah. Probably something probably. clever like that. Yeah. yeah. A little numbers game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Steve. I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. We really tried to give you insight into our lives and a small part of what went into making Reddit. Now, obviously. Steve and I 
just really created a platform. You all are what make Reddit special. That was one of the things we got absolutely right. And we got a lot of things wrong, but the one thing we got right was we knew we wanted to do right by our users. We didn't want obnoxious advertisements. We wanted to make it as easy as possible to just find content, fresh, good content, as soon as you loaded up Reddit every time. And we really strive to create something that would give users control, would give users the authority to really decide what was the most important news of the day for whatever community they belong to, whether it was uh, r slash San Francisco or or r slash Vexillology. Uh, we left it up to users and, and that's what's made it so great. That's why it's the 10th biggest site in the country now and, and why I really do believe Reddit's best years are ahead of it. And the last 10 years have been amazing, but we have a lot of work to do and we will continue to do what we can do to improve the site, to make it a place where anyone can use it to find a community to connect with, to learn with, to share with, and we're going to need your help. So please keep the feedback coming. And you may have noticed we posted a nice little blog on Tuesday with a ton of data, a ton of data, all about the history of Reddit. Basically, all the upvotes, all the downvotes, most saved articles, most gilded comments, all kinds of fascinating stuff. Go take a look. It's at redditblog.com. It'll be the top post or r slash blog if you haven't already. And yeah, that's it. As always, give us feedback. Uh, this was a fun episode to put together. And like I said, I had a really, really good time reconnecting with Steve over a little bit of scotch, talking about the early days of Reddit, stuff that most people... Most people don't get to hear about. Um, I always ended up kind of being the, the public side of Reddit, but I want to be clear, there would be no Reddit without Steve Huffman. Uh, it was absolutely a partnership of equals. And all the things I am good at uh, uh, are, are very well complemented by all the things Steve is good at, because I can assure you the things, he <laughs> the things he's great at are definitely the things that I suck at. So I'm glad you were able to get in his head a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention you should also sign up for Upvoted Weekly, uh, the wonderful newsletter, hand curated every Sunday, shows up in your inbox. Also, if you haven't, uh, add it to your contacts because we had this weird thing where it was showing up in people's spam folders, even though it's clearly not spam. Uh, so please make sure you get it on Sunday morning. Just go to reddit.com slash newsletter to sign up. And if you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, be sure to subscribe to Upvoted on iTunes well over a million downloads now so you can even subscribe on itunes or pocket Casts or overcast whatever you prefer just just keep listening and uh, we're also on soundcloud don't forget that too uh, links to all the posts that we mentioned in this episode are included in this week's show notes and i'm really 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 looking forward to hearing all of your thoughts as always on r slash upvoted the whole team will be there we're paying attention we're reading we're responding so please show up let us know what you think hope you all enjoyed this show and I'm looking forward to 10 more awesome years. Actually, screw it. A hundred more, thousand more, 10,000 more awesome years. Uh, at that point, Reddit will probably become self-aware and will be doomed. But until then, let's keep Redditing, keep upvoting. Please keep listening. And we'll see you again next week on Upvoted by Reddit. Reddit.